Hey, hello everybody and welcome. You are Growth Club members. Uh, this is a training. It's kind of a, I'm gonna call it a pop-up training. You know, I do the monthly training for the practitioners and this is kind of a pop-up. It's like a surprise. It's in addition to the monthly training that I'm doing this uh, month inside the Growth Club. But today I brought special guest Helena with me. So Helena, good morning. Good morning. Yes, and I know the Growth Club members know me. I'm Michael Loger and uh, I'm an emotion code practitioner. I'm also a trainer of the trainers and uh, I'm here inside the group to help you grow your business fast and easy using NLP, Law of Attraction, and of course, some uh, emotion code uh, techniques to help you build your business nice and fast. And today I brought Helena in because uh, the subject of smoking and emotion code comes up a lot. And to be honest with you, I've had success with it two or three times, but it's not my thing. You know, everybody has their thing. So, of course, I've been sending them to Helena. She's got a history of being the stop smoking lady. Helena, uh, introduce yourself to our audience, please. Thank you, Michael. So, yeah, my name is Helena Jenikin. I'm a certified clinical hypnotherapist as well as a certified emotion code practitioner. Around town, I live on Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. I'm known as the Stop Smoking Lady. I help people stop smoking. I've been doing that, helping them stop smoking for the past three years. Wow. And I do that with hypnosis and the emotion code. My success rate in one session is about 90 to 95%. Wow. And I'm so pleased that I found the emotion code because that's why my numbers are so high. Well, good stuff. Well, I'm glad to have you here. So I know that you have a protocol and protocol is the, the term that we use in the growth club for script. Yeah. You know how we've done the training. I've done the protocol for how to run a four person group on money, how to run a four person group on weight loss, how to run a four person group on business. And what I gave people was the protocol, what emotion code to ask for, what beliefs and so on. So today, um, because this is your product, uh, today you agreed to give us some of it. You're going to peek inside your program. You're going to pull a couple things out. So emotion code practitioners and body code practitioners, if you're helping people eliminate and quit smoking, stop smoking, pay attention today. Uh, you may or may not already be doing some of the protocol that Helena is going to give you. And uh, you can add it to your practice. Then you can take on uh, stop smoking clients with some confidence. Hmm. Hey, before we do that, Helena, this week I started inside the Business Growth Club, the weekly challenge. So once a week, and it's so funny because I thought, can I do this once a week? Well, I have a little side piece of paper, and I've been writing down all these challenges. So this week was the first week for the weekly challenge, and I was asking people to get a, get a handle on your client database emails, get a handle on it. And I know I did that over the holidays, and I have 400 paid clients, but guess what? They weren't in one database. Some were in PayPal, some were in Acuity, some were private, some were in like they're all over the place. And I thought, you know what? You gotta get a handle on that. So I ended up getting a handle. I have one database now, and now I know how to communicate with them. So that was the challenge this week. And I, I know you rose to the challenge and tell us about what you did when you saw that challenge and what your experience was. Well, first of all, I, I uh, saw your challenge and because we're in the growth club and we're, we're wanting to build our business, I took a look at the uh, calculations and it was, staggering Michael what that uh, number would mean dollar wise by reaching out to those clients again and having them hire you one more time so I went to my online booking system that I have and generated a report I had over 130 people in there that I have their email addresses for all their contact information I had another oh my gosh I don't know is there like 40, 50, 60 people that I didn't have their email addresses for in there, but I have them somewhere. So, so let's just stop there that. for a moment. So, mm -hmm. so here's the math. There was 50 yeah. people's emails that kind of wasn't, you know, where they should be. If, yep. if you could sell all 50 of those people $100 even, what if you sold them a $400 package? That's $20,000. That's $20,000 in that database. And that's not an unreason. Well, even if you just got them to book one session at $100, that's still $5,000. Like, it is significant. So that's what the challenge was. Get a handle on all. Now, in the next class for the monthly growth club, we're going to tell you what to do with those. Now that you got them collected, well, how do you touch base with them? And how do you get more people into this beautiful 
database that's rich. They're either your clients or they're somebody that took a seminar. These are the people that you want to connect with. So what was your end results with that? Well, the end result is it's like, oh my gosh, there's so much untapped um, resources there, untapped uh, clients and money there. So if I'm wondering like where, why my office is not busy? Well, it's because yeah. I'm not reaching out to my existing clients. That's right. So we talk about that in the growth club. There, there's new clients, you know, you and I are doing the no like and trust. We do a meetup group. We're doing the seven key. That's how people get to know us. That's new ones. But the existing ones, you know, I, you know, so I end up, uh, my, my final count was 400, 403, 400 people. If, 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 if every one of them booked a four hour or, you know, a, a $500 package for me, that is $200,000. It's crazy. So we better be good at nurturing your clients. Now, let's go back to why you're here today. So nurturing them is giving them good service and making sure that you get the good results. And, um, you know, we're always talking about how to give people good results. And before the session, do you have time for a little quick creative insecurity or, you know, imagine getting results with uh, Stop Smoking the way you, Helena. So Helena, I'm gonna turn it over to you. I want you to talk about your program and then you're gonna pull some things out. I might type in the chat here. Uh, we'll see, I'm gonna take a check to see if anybody's joining us live. Likely people are watching the recorded version. So. Helena, go ahead and uh, uh, tell us uh, and, and do, uh, tell us what you want to tell us today. Excellent, good. So, so I have um, just a draft here printed out. It's uh, my protocol is there's a lot of pages to it. There's a lot of information there. There's a lot of support in here for the practitioners so they can understand what's going on with their clients that are smoking. And in the protocol outline, it's step by step. So it talks about the pre-session steps, what to do beforehand, before the session actually starts. It talks about the intake form. There's a very specific client intake form uh, with questions laid out in a specific order that allows our, our smoking clients to give us some insight uh, for us and also for themselves about the reasons or excuses, um, yeah. their beliefs, their anxieties about why they're smoking. And then within this as well is the uh, the questions to ask specifically in which order about beliefs, anxiety, uh, reasons, triggers. So I want to give you a little sneak peek in here, and, and I would and like to. The reason why I like that, uh, Helen. The reason why I like that questionnaire, because then you don't have to spend ten minutes collecting data during the call. And 10 minutes is 10 minutes when they, you know, you want to do a good job. So they've answered, oh, this is not one of their, beliefs. don't bother. This is, you, so, so it's a beautiful, it's like a menu. Instead of uh, waiting to go to the restaurant to order, you're pre-ordering. Saying, here's what I want to work on. Yeah, this, this is, it's quite an intense, uh, not intense, it's a detailed intake form. It'll take them about 10 minutes to fill out. But it's amazing what ideas consciously and subconsciously will come up for them while they're filling that out. And I agree with you, Michael. I like step-by-step -step protocols. Yeah. So well, that's what, you know, that's, you know, again, uh, earlier uh, in the Business Growth Club, I taught the protocol for uh, weight loss and the protocol for money, you know, because before that, I mean, I spent a year, you know, because most people want to work on weight loss or money or career or health. So, you know, you work on something after a while and then you start to say, oh, and then once in a while I would try something and say, oh, I've got to add that. I, and before you know it, I had this, all these stickies about things to add. And I thought, well, I got to turn this into a protocol. And I know you've been doing hypnosis with stop smoking for years and then have added the protocol for uh, the emotion code. So yeah, good right. stuff. So today you're going to pull stuff out of your protocol program. You are offering that for practitioners. They might want to, uh, it's not that they need to become the stop smoking person, but yep. they can take on a non -smoke, a smoking client now. And with confidence, no, because that's the challenge. Where do I get started? What do I ask? And it's, just, it's not just about what is the severity of my addiction. And you're gonna tell us there's way more than the addiction. Go ahead, please. Excellent. So um, on here, I've got, I've got five different beliefs that we've that I've identified regarding smokers and there's 13 different questions around anxiety 
and there's four specific questions around their reasons or excuses for smoking. So I'd like to give you a couple of um, of the belief questions. Okay. So. so, so the very first one is, do I believe I can become a non-smoker? It is fascinating to me, Michael, how many people come see me in my office and they put they, they paid uh, for their in-person session. I charge five hundred dollars for a session and I uh, I do this uh, emotion code question. And do I believe and I get a no? Yeah, well, you know, what's really funny is that a lot of people will. Um, their conscious mind will say, yeah, I want to quit smoking. But the conscious mind's not the boss. It's the subconscious mind that controls everything. And of course, in addition to that, it's all these trapped emotions that are creating the belief that, well, you know what, you don't really want to quit smoking or it doesn't feel safe or feel okay. So, so this is really important that we include beliefs in that. So um, good. So I heard you say anxiety, excuses and beliefs. So carry on. Yep. So one other belief that I found to ask is, is it okay? for me to become a non-smoker? And again, this answer comes up often as no. Yeah. And, and as, a, as a former smoker, I used to be a smoker, I actually can start to, I understand some of this hidden stuff that's going on. Yeah. And it is amazing once do the uh, removing of the uh, trapped emotions, the hidden emotions, and all the other levels of uh, emotions that we ask about and we get it down to a, yes, it's 100%, 10 out of 10, okay to stop smoking. And yes, 10 out of 10 that I believe I can become a non-smoker. Then there's, a, there's other questions around beliefs that um, we can ask to ensure that we lock in um, their belief that they can become a non-smoker. Right. Yeah, well, um, the whole notion about the beliefs are very strong and the belief will dilute the desire. So here's the desire and the belief contradicts the desire and guess what? The belief wins. So this is why it's important to do that. So definitely beliefs. And uh, that was a couple of examples. Mm -hmm. uh, the next uh, section in the, uh, the protocol is about anxiety. So believe it or not, the, the, the question that you want to ask is what's my level of anxiety about quitting smoking? Yeah. And then if it's a zero, fantastic. But chances are it's a higher number. Yeah, One, I, you know, they're always high. They're always you, know, high. you know, it's like even with people with weight loss, the, just the anxiety about having to lose weight or needing to lose weight or the anxiety about food and shot, you know, I start there. Like, let's get rid of all because that anxiety is real. And it's whether it's quitting smoking or quitting eating or anxiety about not business. So definitely uh, there has to be protocol around anxiety. So. Um, so tell us the first thing you just said, but recap the first question for anxiety. Yes. What is my level of anxiety about quitting smoking? Just about quitting smoking. Just about yeah. quitting smoking. And I'd love to share with you the second anxiety and you just tapped onto it. It's a huge issue for, for I would say 80% of my clients. It's what's my level of anxiety about gaining weight due to quitting uh -huh. smoking. It's massive. Yeah. Because they're they're told um, that you know smoking. Uh, once you stop smoking, you're going to gain weight. I'd like yeah. to know <laughs> consciously how that's possible. Just because you're not putting a cigarette into your mouth any longer, how do you gain weight? Well, if they're replacing the smoking with um, with food, it could be a problem. But imagine when there's nothing more happening in in the subconscious mind. There's no voice telling them to have a cigarette, have a cigarette, have a cigarette. If, it, if that's gone, there's yeah. no reason. I can't, even, I can't even appreciate the anxiety about whether you're going to stay quit or not. It's like, oh my God, I've been on day two. I wonder, that's anxiety. Wondering about uh, how long can I, how can I, how long is this going to last? Or am I going to fail? Mm -hmm. I'd like to share one more uh, anxiety that, that I actually see um, I, I saw before I did the emotion code, I would have sometimes people come back um, for a subsequent session and it was due to loneliness. People were smoking because they were lonely. 
So I added this into my protocol. What is my level of anxiety about feeling loneliness when I quit smoking? You see, the smoking is a distraction from emotions that they are actually feeling. Yeah. And so I once I, I added, the, sorry. Oh, sorry. Once I added that question in there, it actually um, that I believe that one again raised my percentages, my success percentages significantly. Yeah. And, well, that's why it's good that your uh, your intake gets the problem with the, the non-smoking client I worked with. His he was at work. His anxiety was about break time because everybody stopped by and said, "Hey, we're going for a smoke." And the smokers club, and that was a community. That was his. That was his tribe. You know, they'd go for a smoke at ten o'clock, twelve o'clock, three o'clock, and they loved it. That's what they did together. So yeah. he had anxiety about the change in relationships and so on and so on. So. Mm -hmm. And then there's a whole section in the protocol about um, triggers or or you know, triggers for smoking. And some of them you wouldn't actually know about to ask, but I've heard a lot of different triggers from people. So I've included all of them that I've heard in yeah. this particular protocol. And so you, yeah. would, you would delete the trapped emotions causing the trigger, you know? That's right. I, That's right. One, one person that I worked with in non-smoking, he said when his phone rang, he looked for his cigarettes before the phone, before he found the phone. Okay, I need my smokes and my cigarettes. That's That was his routine. So imagine the trigger, and I busted the trigger, and uh, about 20 minutes later, I called him. I called him back, and I said, do you have your cigarettes? He said, no, I came for the phone. I didn't I didn't look for my cigarettes. So we thought that was pretty messed up that that happened in yeah. a good way. Yeah. Um, within my protocol too, there is a section at the at the back that are um, there are other questions to have if the person wants to have a subsequent session, yeah. because um, there are sometimes hidden benefits or secondary gain that people have, yeah. and that's that's true for weight loss, that's true for any habit, that's for uh, many fears. Yes. Well, let's give an example of that. Remember, you and I were at the tra we were at a health show, and or and a woman walked by, and she was in lots of pain. And you and I really wanted to we wanted to chat with her. We wanted to help her out. Um, I'm going to uh, do something else here. Why don't you tell the story, and uh, relating to secondary gain? I'll be right back. Okay, good. So um, at this health show, we really wanted to help this lady out, and, and she was inquiring about um, the chart that was in the booth, and and she has chronic pain. So um, so Michael uh, worked on her, and I worked on her a little bit, and she actually felt incredible relief. But then the next words out of her mouth was, "What am I going to do about my disability check that I get?" And boom, oh, she's like, "Oh, it's it's back." It, it's the pain is back. And so that secondary gain, uh, she, I don't even think consciously she recognized that she's linked the idea of no more disability check money with the pain. It was just a thought that came out, words that came out, and back came the pain. So until she actually found another way to bring in that income that she needed, that chronic pain was going to stick with her. It's uh, quite interesting how how that secondary gain is um, often not often but mm -hmm. related to money or even uh, relationships. I I long long time ago one of my first hypnotherapy clients in the early days uh, she came in for depression and she was coming through for for multiple sessions which is good to do when when a person is depressed because we can work through the different layers but what was happening was her husband was driving her to the sessions and she was getting better and i know she was getting better but she said at the, oh, one of our last sessions she goes but what am i going to do if i don't come to see you my husband and i will never spend any time together we yeah. he's been driving me here and there and so she didn't want to let go of the depression because it was getting her uh, something that she really wanted, which was a connection with her husband. I had a friend that was that was scheduled for hip replacement, and I said, "I'd like to see if there's any trapped emotions there that are causing this problem." He says, "He goes, no, no. He goes, I've got a month off." So his gain for not having an emotion code session to help fix his hip possibly was that he took a month off from work 
after he has his hip replacement. Mm -hmm. Good. So uh, here, so here's what we covered today: is that um, smoking, smoking like weight loss in my head and uh, abundance is more than a quick uh, in and out session. You know, like the, it's more than just you know what's my level of resistance. It includes anxieties and beliefs and triggers, and it takes a while to develop all the protocol. And like I did with the weight loss, because I worked on myself and many people, I had groups of four and eight people. And so I built a really robust protocol and you have the same thing for stop smoking. So today the goal was to let other practitioners that want to include uh, stop smoking in part of their offering. And, and they would sell it as a package, not as you know a 25 minute session. So tell people what you think some of them, uh, you know, after getting successful with your protocol, what would be fair prices? You know, they can choose whatever they want, but what are people paying for some emotion code stop smoking programs? I would start at $300. I would start at $300 for the stop smoking protocol. And Michael, you can actually do this in one session. It would be a long session, maybe an hour, uh, an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. But what's wonderful about this protocol is that the client has homework to do prior to arriving in the session, and that includes watching um, a video. And the video is explaining consciously, it's me as a hypnotherapist explaining um, the, uh, the reasons and the myths about tobacco and nicotine and how this all works with the mind and the subconscious mind. So they're coming to the session already with more information than they ever had and already their ideas about smoking and their reasons and excuses are starting to change. Yeah. And then after this session is um, you give them a self-hypnosis audio recording to strengthen everything that they've experienced, everything from the intake form, the video, from the emotion code session. And it is uh, very robust. So starting out at $300, um, moving up to $500. Did you know in Canada, a person who is smoking a pack of cigarettes a day, which is costing now between $13 and $15 a pack of smokes, uh, in the United States it's slightly less, in Europe it's slightly more, is uh, in Canada they're spending a minimum of $450 Canadian dollars of after-tax money every month. That's, that's $5,000 a year on cigarette smoking. So so charging three five thousand dollars a year to smoke. That's, That's right. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. So three to five hundred dollars to stop smoking. So let's do the math. So how much does your protocol program cost? My protocol program costs three hundred Canadian dollars. Okay, three hundred dollars, and it take one client to pay that off. You know, I'm supporting you to grow your business. You know, I'm. There's no affiliate program here. I just want people. You know, and I. I think um, it was interesting because. I had another practitioner that I wanted to help develop my weight loss program. And he was really honest with me, he said, I'm not really passionate about that. And I get it, right? And the same with stop smoking. You're very passionate. You're the stop smoking lady. You love working with that. So, uh, and that's why you developed that. Uh, so, so if you're an emotion code, body code practitioner, and for a really small fee, you can, uh, learn the protocol plus the intake form you could make it a you could make it a big part of your pack you don't have a package on your pack your sales page right now you know one off a uh, half hour here whatever you're doing what about having a package of three to five hundred dollars for non-smoking and what if what if you only three got four a month what if you only made two thousand dollars a month really well good helena uh tell me how you'd like to wrap up today's session mm -hmm. So um, I believe that a person who smokes, the number one thing that they can do for their life is to stop smoking. And I'm really happy to be able to help hundreds of people live new lives and become non-smokers, permanent, healthy, happy, and wealthier non-smokers. And it makes me feel just terrific. And I'm so pleased to be able to share my protocol with people out there so they can go and help even more people become free of smoking. Okay. Good. Uh, below Helena's name, it's the stopsmokinglady.com forward slash T E C stop smoking. And uh, that's where the offer that we're talking about today, the protocol for body code, emotion code practitioners and how to add a package of non smoking to your offerings. Helena, thanks very much. Uh, my hunch is um, we're going to get some good feedback from this. 
from our, our friends watching it and for the people that are going to purchase it and start adding uh, stop smoking to their packages. So let's say goodbye to our friends watching and we'll see you later, everybody. Cheers. Cheers.